What is going on you guys? My name is Rage and we are back today with another video guide and playthrough. In today's video, we're going to be going through Doom 1-2. A lot of players have, you know, unfortunately don't have access to Black Bolt and Phoenix as well as the newest Legendary Jubilee. So I decided to redo this using some X-Men characters because of the fact that I do believe they are feasible and I've seen a lot of players mention them. So with that being said, um, let's dive right into the roster and I'll show you guys who I've used here. Be Colossus, I'm bringing him on board here with the Tier 11. As you can see, almost 44k, as well as the ISO 8 healer to provide protection. And he's really going to be shouldering damage for our roster. Synergizing with Colossus, it is going to be Beast. Now, Beast is a really, really key piece because of the fact that he provides a boatload of benefits to his fellow mutants. As you can see, I have him at tier 11 as well. In addition to that, he's also going to be healing and just doing additional DPS when he can. Next, we got Psylocke here. She's really nice to be able to cleanse the conditions on our team. In addition to that, Psylocke does provide additional damage. The really nice thing about her is the fact that on her passive, she actually does protect her X-Men characters when they drop below that 50% health threshold. Really just kind of helping us with the overall survivability. And for her, I do actually have the Skirmisher, just to, that way we can mark the vulnerability and taking advantage of extra damage. Next, a little weaker here, but I do have Iceman. Um, I would love to have him built up more, but unfortunately we got him with the 3 yellow. Uh, with him, Iceman, he's going to be providing a lot of extra damage. Um, you know, obviously, if you guys have a stronger one, definitely boost him up if you can. He's going to be applying that damage that's slow, as well as that stun when applicable. And as well, last but not least, it is going to be Kitty Pride here. We're utilizing Kitty Pride for a couple of things. She's going to be providing additional protection for our characters, as she will always apply Evade to the most injured, astonishing X-Men. So that's going to benefit, obviously, Beast and Iceman. And on top of that, uh, Kitty Pride also has the ability to actually apply offense down to enemies that are not taunting and flipping them to defense down uh, when they are taunting. So really, really nice for us just to take advantage of to uh, have additional damage and um, support for the team. With that being said, let's dive right into the playthrough. And as you can see here, consistent with the previous node that I was able to do, uh, it is 195k. I put the tankier characters, Beast and Colossus, on the right side, separated by uh, Katie Pride as well as uh, Iceman on the left with Psylocke being aimed in the back. So with that kind of setup, um, generally you want to split up your tankier target, your tankier allies here uh, with your squishier, so that way you can ensure more survivability. The nice thing about this node as well, you can see that we also get the provided services of a uh, you know, Negasonic Teenage Warhead. So she's going to be great to be able to kind of strip away positive effects. But from the very beginning here, um, the two targets we have to be mindful of is going to be Cyclops and Pyro because of the fact that they do more damage. And um, because we're up against a Blob and a Toad setup, at the very beginning, this is definitely where it will get a little pesky. Uh, we have to be able to kind of shoulder the damage a little bit. But that's why we bring in Kitty Pride because of the fact that she actually has the offense down, which perfects our team. Um, and additionally, like I said, Negasonic's uh, DPS and damage is very, very much appreciated in this initial node. So just to be mindful of the fact that we have to kind of shoulder the burden at the very beginning, especially with Blob having a taunt. And that's quite all right because we have Psylocke here being able to put the negatives on him as well, which is very fortuitous for us. But keep in mind, um, in order for us to get to the next wave, um, they're not going to be the priority targets there. Um, now that the taunt is off, you can see that I do actually go ahead and I resume doing damage here, aiming for Cyclops. Another recommendation as well is also going to be Pyro, just due to the fact that, again, we want to take out any of the enemies to have higher damage output. And with them especially having charged attacks, um, we just do not want them in, in our way here for the waves going forward. And Toad is squishy as well, so uh, really, ideally, you want to leave Sabretooth and Blob in this first wave, just due to the fact that they're not really too big of a threat. And fortunately, with our team, we do have a lot of sustainability, as you previously saw in Node 1. So Cyclops goes down, and you can see right away, that actually does prompt the next wave already. Uh, it's followed by two Wolverines, as well as another Colossus. So very, very tanky, guys, but that's why it was good that we were already kind of focusing Pyro and Cyclops at the beginning, and he... And Toad is already naturally skinny, so it's just nice to take him out. If you and on top of that, by taking out Toad, 
um, he's going to lose that synergy with Blob, so that actually works to our advantage. But once again, Negasonic comes in handy. You can see that Colossus is getting quite a bit weaker there, but once again, Beast with the additional healing, and that's why we love that synergy with Beast and Colossus, especially with our ISO 8 healers that's noted in the intro of the video. Um, now, back to 8 out of 11 enemies left. We've taken out all the squishier targets now, so I do go ahead and actually start resuming my attack on Sabretooth, with him being the weaker one, and I don't mind keeping Blob and Colossus alive. Just keep in mind, though, uh, due to the fact that they can taunt, um, just be mindful of the of uh, the fact that they may get in our way later on when we do attack them so um personally i do like to always aim for the high damaging targets of the bunch especially when we're going on to the next wave and keep in mind too uh with five characters here that means there is still three enemies left that we have to deal with in this uh in this node with that being said, you can see how great our synergy is with uh, Colossus shouldering all the damage. And this run's looking really good. It gives us enough time to kind of build up our energy once again. Um, Kitty Pride as well as Iceman doing their work, doing their damage. We still have Negasonic alive assisting with her damage as well. So um, overall, if you have a very tanky team for the snow, not a big deal. Even if we're underrated, it's because of the synergy of the X-Men with both Colossus and Beast having that immense support. And as well as the ISO hate healers really getting value for keeping our, our team in great shape as we're constantly battling these guys here. So you can see that right now, I am just trying to weaken them. Um, there's a lot of buffs going on here, especially with them having a Colossus and kind of taking away uh, damage away from their team as well. But once again, we're gonna use that AOE DPS that Iceman has, a really, really beautiful skill set I love. Um, it's unfortunate we're not using, um, obviously, Bishop and Jubilee for this, but again, I don't wanna be making a video um, using a Legendary if the point of it is to help you guys get to that point to get that Legendary. So um, it's kind of counterintuitive. So that's why we can't fully utilize the Astonishing X-Men here, but you can see there that we do go ahead and we finish off Sabretooth now. Seven, ele seven enemies remaining out of the 11 here. So I do believe that with the next enemy that drops it does actually prompt the next wave so with that being said we go ahead we finish off blob um there are three now remaining being both the two wolverines and colossus and now you can see that there's two more paddles joining the battle in addition to psylocke so uh definitely those guys are going to be the problem area here I don't think this node is as hard as the first node, but just be mindful of the fact that obviously the pyros can do quite a bit of damage. Uh, that's just what they're. That's just how they're built in terms of their kit. On top of that, as well, uh, Psylocke's capabilities. Don't forget that she can also uh, cleanse, right? Cleanse the team. So uh, good to be mindful of that. We have one personally, so we know how she operates. But fortunately, the uh, the torches excuse me the pyros as well as psylocke are both are all really squishy so i mean it's not a big deal uh, so as long as we focus our damage really it's colossus that's going to kind of get in the way there but you can see he's almost getting taken down here as well once again negasonic coming in clutch finishing off colossus and now we have full access to attacking whoever we like so we're going to go ahead we are going to finish off one of the pyros there and then now Wolverine being quite weak as well, you know, a good target, you know, depending on what the situation unfolds, you might just want to take down whoever's weaker, even when you know that obviously uh, you know, Pyro is squishier than Wolverine. Um, these guys are quite weak already, so we go ahead and finish off Wolverine. And now with that being said, at this point, if there's just the last couple of guys here, you likely won't have issues finishing this node. So um, I know I know these uh, these initial nodes in Doom Chapter 1 do have quite a bit of a hard time for a lot of newer players, especially when you don't have a legendary. But you can see with the synergy of the Astonishing X-Men, um, especially with the other X-Men characters from the that first gen uh, being Colossus and Psylocke, the synergy is amazing. And Beast still provides immense value to them being fellow X-Men. So there you guys have it. That is the three-star unlock right there. So hope this video is able to help you guys provide another perspective in tackling these nodes with no legendary whatsoever. So thank you as always for watching you guys supporting the channel. I appreciate it. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.